Hello everyone and welcome back. If this is your first time, I hope you'll stay. Espero que te quedes. So uh, today, I want to have a little look at the indicative, but more so the subjunctive. El presente del indicativo y el presente del subjuntivo. En español. Para la gente que está aprendiendo el español. ¿Vale? As we know, el subjuntivo es, what is it? What have we told you always? It's a mood. Now in Spanish you have three moods. You have the indicative mood, you have the subjunctive mood, and you have the imperative mood. Okay? So today, indicative and the subjunctive is what we're focusing on. So, what's the main difference between the two? Como británicos, gente que habla inglés, puede ser que eres americano, o australiano, o de jamaicano, o de otro sitio. We tend to have a problem with the subjunctive. So today, going to go over how and when to use it. Okay? So what's the difference between the indicative and the subjunctive? Well, the main difference is that the indicative talks about real facts. So, hechos, cosas reales, ¿no? Eh, información, te da información y es sobre la realidad. En cambio, el, el subjuntivo es un poco más irreal, ¿ok? Es irreal porque se centra más en las emociones, cómo se siente uno, ¿ok? No, ¿cómo, ¿Cómo estás sintiendo? Las emociones. Cosas irreales, ¿vale? Eh, valoraciones, uh, duda, para expresar duda, para expre expresar sugerencia o prohibición, ¿ok? To express all of these things, doubt, prohibitions, uh, valorations, emotions, and the unfreedom, ¿ok? So, be patient with me, hay que tener un poco de paciencia porque vale la pena esta clase para luego uh, poder usarlo mejor a la hora de escribir y a la hora de, eh, de, 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 de hablar. No puedo hablar. <risa> so, los verbos más importantes para recordar son esta, estos. ¿okay? Y palabras. Eh, no solo verbos. La palabra que has visto muchas veces, ojalá. Ojalá, ojalá, it's a wish, I wish this would happen, because it's a wish, it's showing wish. Esperar, which is to hope, es esperar, to hope, I hope he comes, espero que venga, to hope, esperar, okay? Querer, which is to want, even though it means love as well in Spanish, Esperar, querer, querer, to love, to want, I want you to do this, okay, querer, dudar, which is the word for to doubt, to doubt, y desear, which is to wish, I desire something, so these are the main words um, that will tell you that it's the subjunctive, or you should employ the subjunctive, Ojalá, esperar, querer, dudar, desear, o recomendar, to recommend. ¿Ok? Voy a dar un ejemplo de un verbo en el indicativo y luego lo voy a hacer también en subjuntivo para que, to refresh your memory, ¿ok? Para refrescar uh, lo que ya tienes aquí. Vale, el verbo ir. Ir to go. Ir. I am. So, in the present indicative, we would say, Yo voy. Boy. I go. Tú vas. Ella. Él o ella va. Nos, nosotros vamos. Vosotros vais. Ellos van. This is the um, indicative. So, voy al cole. I go to school. Okay? Now, the subjunctive would be, 
vaya, vaya, yo vaya, tú vayas, él o ella vaya, nosotros vayamos, vosotros vayáis y ellos vayan. Okay? I will spend some more time with that if you need it. Or I think of another verb, tener, for example, to have. Um, in the subjunctive, in the indicative would be tengo. Tengo dinero. No tengo dinero. Tienes dinero. You have money. But the subjunctive would be tenga. Tengas. Tenga. Tengamos. Tengáis. Tengan. Okay? If you need me to recommend a book for you that will help you with the subjunctive, let me know down below. Okay? I don't want to spend forever on this, but I do want to go over these with you. Okay? So, sentence starters. Para empezar, vuestras frases, estas palabras son buenas. Okay? Es necesario. Okay? It's necessary. Es necesario. It's necessary. Es imprescindible. Okay? As well, it is fundamental, it's important. Es verdad, it's true. Es verdad, it's true. Es triste, es triste, it's sad. That's, that again is emotion, isn't it? Sad, es triste. Es bueno, es valor, una valoración, es bueno o es malo. Es malo que esto pasa. So these are sentence starters that will help you. So, es necesario. Que estudies mucho, okay? So it's necessary for you to study a lot. You ought to study a lot. It's necessario. So, for advice, recommendations, um, valoraciones, this is when we would employ the subjunctive. Right, okay. So these are the examples I have for you um, in both, both moods, in the indicative and then in the um, subjunctive. So if I was to say to you, Es el más guapo. He's the most handsome. That's indicative because that's a fact. Okay? Maybe, well, it's a fact. It's obvious. Okay? It's real. He is the most handsome. Maybe he's surrounded by clowns and he just looks the most handsome. But to change this into the subjunctive, I would put something that shows that There's some emotions, or um, you're changing the reality. So I would say, I doubt. I've used I doubt. Dudo. I doubt that he is the most handsome. Okay? So the verb doubt, do that, then invites you to use the, the, the subjunctive. Dudo. Okay? Say I must not. I doubt he is the most handsome. Okay? So. A um, very important point that you need to remember is this. When you're talking in the indicative, perhaps it's one person, just one person. Él es el más guapo, okay? Whereas the subjunctive, normally you see that there is, there are two subjects in, in the sentence. So, uh, for example, Dudo is referring to me, okay? I doubt. And then you have a second person, which is he, he. Okay, I, I doubt he's the most handsome. So there are two subjects here. In the subjunctive, there's always two subjects. There are hardly ever one, okay? Because someone has to feel there's something that we're talking about. Or someone has to express what they're expressing about the topic. So there's always two subjects. And that's the main difference um, with the subjunctive and the indicative. Where the indicative doesn't have to have two subjects. With one, it's just fine, okay? Right. Number two. Siempre me hablan. They always talk to me. It's a fact. Every time I go to class, they talk to me. Siempre me hablan. They always talk to me. So, that's the indicative. How would we make it into the subjunctive? Remember, emotions, opinions, feelings is what the emotion, what is what subjunctive um, does. So, I would say, no me gusta, okay? No me gusta, I'm sharing an opinion. No me gusta que me hablen. I don't like them speaking to me. I don't like that they speak to me. No me gusta que me hablen. 
So you see the difference? One is just expressing the fact that they always talk to me, talk to me and the subjunctive is saying, I don't like that they speak to me. Okay? Do you, do you understand? Do you see the difference? Okay. Next, continue. Number three. Viene Juan a la reunión. So John is coming to the meeting. How do I change this into the subjunctive? Es necesario. Es necesario. Do you remember your sentence started? It's necessary. Okay? Remember recommendations. Recomendaciones. Prohibiciones. Valoraciones. Es necesario. Okay? It's necessary that John comes to the meeting. Es necesario que venga Juan a la reunión. Do you now see the difference? Are you seeing the difference? I hope you are. Next. No llueve en el pueblo. No llueve en el pueblo. So, it isn't raining in the village, or it doesn't rain in the village. Okay? Simple. One subject, it doesn't rain, refers to, to the weather, nothing else. Okay? It doesn't rain. Now, ojalá, 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 ojalá. I wish it would rain. Ojalá que, ojalá que no llueva en el pueblo. I hope it doesn't rain in the, the village. So ojalá can be translated as I wish or I hope, okay? Ojalá, okay? I hope it doesn't, doesn't rain in the village, okay? Right, next. A indicative sentence. Odio cuando me gritas así. I hate when you shout at me like that. Okay? I hate when you shout at me like this or like that. Again, odio is emotions, isn't it? So that stays the same. We can change this by saying, odio que me grites así. Okay? I hate that you shout at me like this. So both of these, you can see, have two subjects, but this verb is what I've changed into the subjunctive. Instead of gritas, I put grites, grites, because grites, yeah, because it's um, the subjunctive. So you could you could have it both ways. You can use the indicative or um, the subjunctive in this case. Okay, right. Next, continue. Te quiero, te quiero. I love you. I always put that one on. Te quiero. I love you. It's a fact. I love you. I love you. I've got a love, a lot of love in my heart. I love you. Te quiero. Okay. Subjunctive. How do I change that? Quiero. Que me quieras como yo a ti. Quiero. I want. It's a wish of mine. Okay. Subjunctive is about wishing. Okay. Wishing. Hoping. Quiero que me quieras. I want you to love me the way I love you. I want you to love me the way I love you. Quiero que me quieras como yo a ti. Okay. I want you to love me the way I love you. Okay. So, it's that influence. Okay? I want you to feel something. I want you to do something. Subjunctive. Okay. <laughs> Next. Juan se encuentra bien. So, John is okay. That's the indicative. It's normal. It's, it's, it's obvious. John is okay. That's, that's reality. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with him. How do I make this into, the subjunctive sentence, into a subjunctive sentence? Espero, I hope. Remember, esperar is to hope. Espero, I hope. Que se encuentre bien Juan. Okay? Espero que se encuentre bien Juan. I hope John is okay. So, again, the verb I change here is encontrar. En vez de decir, encontrar, se encuentra. In the subjunctive of it, se encuentre. Okay? You have to check the endings and the tables to make sure that you know how to change the indicative, indicative into the subjunctive. Because I promise you, the moment you understand the indicative or you know the indicative of a verb, resto es facilísimo. Okay? P 
piece of cake. The moment you know the indicative, the subjunctive would be a lot easier for you to learn. It's a promise, it's a promise, it's a promise. Okay, next. Baila salsa con Elena. You dance salsa with Elena. Yes, I see you both dancing salsa on Tuesdays. Baila salsa con Elena. You dance salsa with Elena. But I want to change that. Okay, I'm a bit jealous. I want to say, prefiero que no bailes con Elena. Prefiero que no bailes salsa con Elena. I prefer, I prefer, I would prefer if you didn't buy, if you didn't dance with Elena. Okay, prefiero que no bailes. Indicative, bailas, you dance. Subjunctive, bailes. So the A in bailas changes to an E. Bailas con Elena. You dance with Elena. Prefiero que no bailes. I prefer if you didn't, if you don't dance with Elena. I prefer if you didn't dance with her actually, no. Dance with me. <laughs> okay, right. Next. Necesito ayuda. I need help. Okay, obviously I can't cope on my own. Necesito ayuda. I need help. In the subjunctive, how would I say, say it? Necesito. I need you to help me. Necesito que me ayudes. Necesito que me ayudes. It's a necessity. I'm saying something I need. Okay? I need it. Okay. Uh, so the last one. Sara, Sara, Sara tiene miedo a los perros. Sara tiene miedo a los perros. So Sarah is scared of dogs. Actually, so am I. Um, so, how would we change that from the indicative um, Sarah, uh, Sarah is scared of dogs to the subjunctive? Well, the, the example I've given you is Quiero que Sara deje de tener miedo a los perros. I want, it's a desire man, I want Sarah to stop being scared of dogs. To stop being scared of dogs. Que deje de. Deje, dejar de is stop doing something. It could be a bad habit. It could be just doing something. Stop doing it. So I want Sarah to, or Sarah to stop being scared of dogs. Because it's ridiculous. Very nice dogs out there. Okay? So, Sarah tiene miedo a los perros. Quiero que Sarah deje de tener miedo a los perros. Okay? So, you can practice this by writing down some sentences with the indicative and then think how can I change it? How can I change it using emotions, desires, prohibitions, um, what else did I say? Desires, recommendations and something that's unreal. It's not so tangible. Okay, how can I change it? If you still struggle with the subjunctive, let me know. Uh, I've done several classes on the subjunctive, but we do get quite stuck on it because I feel as though it's one of the most difficult things to get our heads around. So, don't worry, we will keep practicing and let me know, uh, well, how you, what you thought of the lesson. If you need more help, let me know that also. And so with that, I'm going to leave you and I'm going to say, hasta pronto, and yeah, Feliz um, fin de semana. I was left of the week. We're nearly there. I'm counting ready.